the forest. For thousands of years, it's provided us with food, shelter, and of course, wood. Wood is not only essential for making tools, but also the first source of energy that humans could use at any time of the year. A tree transforms sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to oxygen and biomass. This beech tree, for example, can capture one ton of CO2 in 80 years. There are many species of trees, all with different forms based on their varying fiber structures and densities. This means they differ in the ways they can be used, and also the amounts of energy they store. Unlike gas or oil, wood doesn't always contain the same amount of energy. The main reason for this is the water that's stored inside it. Fresh wood contains up to 50% water, and water doesn't burn. <coughs> and water does not burn. One kilogram of fresh beech has an energetic value of 2.16 kilowatt hours. After six months, it contains 3.3. And after a year, one kilo of beech provides 4.15 kilowatt hours, almost double that of the fresh state. A storage place should protect the wood from rain and be well ventilated. The wood should be chopped and stacked so that air can flow through the gaps. It shouldn't be touching the ground. Firewood needs a water content of around 15% for ideal combustion. With proper storage, this is achieved after about one year. Let's take a look at how wood burns. The combustion happens in three phases. First, the wood dries until all the water is vaporized. The higher the water content, the more energy this takes. At 150 degrees Celsius, it begins to break down into charcoal, releasing wood gases at the same time. This phase is called pyrolysis and takes place at up to 550 degrees. The third phase is when the wood gases oxidize to produce heat and light. Finally, the energy captured from the sun is available for the home. All the effort of growing, supplying, and drying the firewood has paid off. Today, there's a wide variety of wood burning devices available for use at home. In Eastern Europe, many popular ovens can be used for both heating and cooking. However, only 20% of the wood's energy is transformed to heat, not a lot. But how much of the wood's energy can we get with a modern oven? These operate almost fully automatically. The wood just has to be placed in the oven. It ignites automatically, and pyrolysis only happens on one side of the stacked wood, causing the pile to gradually decompose. The oxidation takes place in a separate combustion chamber to guarantee a clean reaction. Also, the exhaust gases transfer their heat to the oven and to hot water storage before they leave through the chimney. The efficiency of an oven like this can be over 90%. The chimney is the engine of the fire. It provides an escape route for the hot smoke, which rises up out of the house. This pulls in fresh air, rich in oxygen, from outside the oven and transports emissions and particles away from the family. A chimney's drag, or power, depends on its diameter, temperature gradient, and the size of the fire. Chimneys should be cleaned about once a year to reduce the accumulated debris. Not doing this can cause bad ventilation and lead to carbon monoxide and particulate matter inside the house. It can even start a fire. All of this poses serious health risks to the family. Some countries in the UNECE region even have laws to ensure appropriate maintenance. A well-working chimney will provide us with heat for our living space, but this heat will try to escape through any material. The best idea is to use those that don't conduct the heat easily and keep it where it is, such as styrofoam, wool, or even wood itself. Here's Anna. In her living room, heat leaves through the walls, ceiling, and even the closed windows, as we can see using thermal cameras. The challenge is to lock in as much heat as possible. Insulating the ceiling, walls, or the windows can keep the heat where we need it. 
Like this, Anna doesn't need as much wood to heat her room. All of this is in Anna's hands. How the oven is used to heat what kind of wood containing how much water. She can prevent harmful emissions and particulate matter polluting the air inside and outside the house. Anna is the center, around which everything revolves. By informing herself and spreading the word, she can change the way her family benefits from wood inside the house. This has an impact on the amount of wood taken out of the forest, the work that needs to be done, the heating time, and the family expenses. You might ask yourself, what happens to the emissions after they leave the chimney? While the fine particles should be kept at a minimum as they return to the ground, the CO2 emitted is needed by the growing trees, closing the carbon cycle. That's why using wood from sustainably managed forests is not only good for your region and your budget, but also for the climate that we all share. Read about firewood used in households and get more heat from less wood.